So hi, everyone. Um, thank you for the invitation to speak today. Uh, my name is Daniel Olson, and I work for Intellectual Ventures in their clean energy modeling team. Uh, and today I'm going to be talking about a test system that we've developed for the uh, United States um, with high resolution, uh, temporal, and spatial data. And let's see if the slides will advance. Right. Here we go. So uh, we are trying to build the most high resolution, uh, both in time and space, open source data set uh, for the US electric grid to be used for production cost modeling, uh, at least now, and hopefully for capacity expansion modeling in the future. Um, we are also using this model to run various scenarios for uh, high renewable and high clean energy penetration um, of uh, what the grid might look like in the future. Uh, and using the results of those models to uh, summarize um, trade-offs between different potential approaches to how we might get to a decarbonized power grid and hoping to communicate that data in a digestible way to the general public and to policymakers uh, while still having a open source model so that all of you energy nerds can poke around and uh, believe that what we're saying is not just pulled out of thin air. So the data set that we have right now is uploaded on Zenodo. Um, and I will briefly walk through uh, what data is there. So um, it's everything that's needed to support a multi-period DC OPF. Um, and the data format is loosely based around uh, what Matt Power uh, needs in order to run, uh, with a few extra columns thrown in there as well um, to add a little bit of extra information. Uh, so it is very high resolution. Uh, it's about 80,000 buses, 100,000 branches, uh, 13,000 generators. Uh, and we have the load profiles and renewable generation profiles um, on a per generator basis uh, for every hour of the year 2016. So we've got all of the branch data, the bus data, a mapping of buses to substations. Uh, we have a um, tabular data package documentation of what all of the different tables are and what all of the columns are, uh, data types and all of that. We talk about DC lines, uh, demand profiles, generation cost curves, hydro profiles, um, all of the generator data, the solar profiles, um, substation locations, latitude and longitude, so you can do um, some uh, distance calculations, wind profiles, and then load zone names. So we get the data. Um, there's a paper up on archive that talks about this in more detail, uh, but I will quickly walk through the, the high level points of where it comes from. Um, we have grid topology from Texas A&M's synthetic grid project that uh, was sponsored by RPE. Um, we have generation locations and capacities based on EIA form 860, hourly demand from EIA um, with some disaggregation of the bigger balancing authorities into uh, smaller load zones. Our load zones are typically state level or smaller. Um, wind power from NOAA's historical wind speeds, uh, solar power from NREL's solar radiation database, um, hydro profiles from sort of a combination of EIA form 923 for the monthly energy, and then uh, whatever data we can find on the um, shorter term uh, shapes, which is, it varies depending on region to region. So we tried to do as best we could with the information that was out there. Um, and then we took all of this data and we ran this through production cost models and tuned the generation uh, cost curves and the transmission capacities until we got results coming out for 2016 that matched the historical data. This is just a quick visual depiction of everything. Um, we take the uh, renewable profiles, the demand, the infrastructure. Uh, we do some um, custom modifications to, uh, you know, we say, what might renewable energy look like in 2030? What if you scale it up here? What if you scale it up there? What if you use different uh, wind to solar ratios? That all goes into a production cost model. And then we analyze the results coming out of there uh, to provide some high level visualizations and insights. And we've done some validation of the results coming out of here uh, to make sure that they match what we want them to. Uh, so we've done this one on- One minute, uh, one minute, Daniel. Thank you. 
Uh, we've done this on the interconnection level as well as uh, state by state level. And we've used this to look at um, different policy implications. So uh, looking at Western states uh, clean energy goals, uh, we set up two different policy scenarios, one where renewables are built in the best locations and interstate transmission is built to connect them to load centers, and one where each state tries to go alone and doesn't cooperate. And what we see is uh, a difference in you can either build less renewable capacity or less transmission capacity or some combination of the two uh, if you have this cooperation. And we've also done this for looking at uh, if everyone matches California's ambitious goals and you see a much bigger difference, like the, the effort required is, is much higher if we want to get to real uh, decarbonization goals. So uh, let me wrap up. Um, we are expanding our analysis to the Eastern interconnection and the full US. Uh, we are gonna have an interactive online dashboard to visualize the results. And if you'd like to help us with this effort, we are hiring. Uh, so here is uh, more information about what we've done so far and how to get in touch with us in the future. Is that time? Uh, that's time, uh, Robbie. Yeah, sure. Um, please, questions? So I had a question about the validation. You said in the paper, as Tom Brown, you had said in the paper that you had some problems with the validation. Was this a mismatch of the generation and the transmission? Um, we've had similar problems matching these data sets. So you get unwanted load shedding and curtailment when you're mixing different data sets sometimes, especially with the transmission constraints. Yeah, I think the, the biggest issue we had with um, infeasibility was uh, the incompatibility of the demand profiles and the transmission capacity. Um, so we had issues there, uh, and then we had issues where the load flow would look kind of weird um, based on some transmission constraints that were feasible but not really realistic. So we sort of iteratively went through and uh, ran a model, tuned it a little bit, looked at the congestion patterns, uh, tuned it a little bit more, and so um, using a combination of transmission changes and cost curve changes, uh, we settled on something that looks pretty reasonable in terms of there's not um, unreasonable congestion in anywhere and the total generation by zone and by generation type looks okay. Uh, Peter Fairley has a question, probably from Canada. Yes, greetings. Um, just curious um, why you're modeling only the US grid given the intimate uh, interconnection, but uh, and you know integration of the U.S. and Canadian grids and the important hydropower resources in in Canada that can help balance uh, variable RE. Yeah, that's sort of a limitation of our input data sets. Um, a lot of what we're getting our data from is EIA, and uh, as far as I know, there isn't analogous data available from Canada. But if there is uh, similar data with all the same information, uh, that's something we would love to integrate in the future. Question from Tiger. Uh, yeah, Sorry. Maybe I'll add w w one comment here. This is Yixing from Intellectual Ventures too. And uh, yes, right now, uh, I mean, due to limited time, we focused on United States electric grid, but we are definitely looking forward to expanding to uh, both Canada and uh, Mexico. So basically to cover the whole uh, uh, North America. And uh, yeah, again, if you have, you guys have great data, uh, we, we would love the, uh, you to share with us, uh, you to share the data with us and we can make the model better. Thank you. Our next questioner is Tyler Ruggles. All right, I, uh, I had a question about, um, you mentioned this calibrations or tuning that you perform, and then you shared results with us. Do you find that the, the results that you shared are quite sensitive to this original tuning, or, or is it um, pretty robust against those exact values you choose? So we haven't done a sensitivity analysis on exactly how robust the numbers are. Um, we looked at EIA data on actual cost curves uh, for different technologies in different regions and used those numbers as a starting point uh, and then uh, did some tweaking from there based on um, if certain states had uh, sort of an imbalance of generation compared to other states or an imbalance within their state. 
Um, so they're, I don't have quantifiable um, sensitivities to share, unfortunately. Um, thank you, Daniel. We should probably wrap up there. So